Um, thank you for joining us, everybody. Um, this, these are crazy times for sure. And uh, I know that it's difficult to get structure and make time for everything throughout the day. So um, I hope that this is worthwhile time and there's some free stuff included. So um, hopefully that will help as well. Um, like I said, this session is being recorded. So um, you'll have access to the full thing um, if you wanted to share it with your colleagues. So uh, my name is Laura Fenn, and I'm the creator and founder of The Walk-In Classroom. We're a nonprofit program based in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, just run through an overview of the program and talk about how the walk-in classroom can be used um, in sort of how it was intended to be used in a traditional school setting. Um, also how it's used in an after-school setting and then now with a hybrid setting as well as some ideas for uh, straight homeschooling for those of you who um, were homeschoolers by choice or now currently a homeschooler by default. So, um, so by the end of this presentation, um, we, you will understand what the walk-in classroom is. I'll review some of the research behind the program, um, and then I'll go over the content and the structure, and then I'll review some of the resources that we have available to supplement the program, um, and then give you some ideas as to how the program might be incorporated, uh, and then we'll have time for question and answer. And like I said, if you do have any questions in the meantime, go ahead and put them in the chat, and I'll try to get to that um, as we're going along, but otherwise I'll, we'll have time for everything at the end. We have a small group today, so we can go ahead and, and answer all those questions directly. Um, okay, so the, the walk-in classroom started, I started it when I was a fifth grade teacher because the kids were sitting a lot and um, you know time was being cut for PE and recess. And so I knew how much I enjoyed getting up and getting out of the classroom. You all know if you go to a workshop, even just for a one day conference, it's torture for sitting around for six hours a day. Um, and that's what these kids do every day, 180 days of the school year. And oftentimes they're on a school bus on the way to school and a school bus on the way home. And they really don't get a lot of physical activity. So um, I thought that a way that I could sort of blend getting some fresh air and exercise um, with instruction is if I were to record some of the lessons that I would have taught to the students while they were in the class sitting down, probably like this. Um, and if I were to record the podcasts and have the kids listen to them while they were up and walking. And my intention had been to really just um, get the kids some fresh air and exercise. I really didn't think that they would learn very much. Uh, if they did learn or remember anything, I just sort of figured that that would be gravy. Um, but what ended up happening, but, but I knew that when they got back to the classroom, um, they'd be in better moods, they would be ready to learn more, they'd be primed for learning. Um, you know, but I had to tell my principal that like I was, you know, teaching them while I wasn't just taking them outside for fun, God forbid, no, but I was actually teaching them while they were outside. Um, but anyway, what ended up happening is, you know, the smart kids um, are not always the best listeners because they don't have to be. And so students who struggle in a traditional classroom, so students with ADHD, dyslexia, autism, um, students who are poor readers for whatever reason, um, you know, they sort of, a traditional classroom setting really doesn't work for them. But this new way of like walking while they were listening to an educational podcast, these kids soared. Uh, and to be able to feel smart for the first time when you're, you know, 10 or 11 years old is really, really powerful. Um, not only do, did those children feel differently about themselves, but the kids who in a traditional classroom had always been sort of the high flyers, they recognized that those kids were also smart. Um, it's just that their learning style needed to be engaged in a different way. So the picture on the right of the screen is um, a picture of the walk-in classroom in action in a typical classroom setting. So the students are all listening to the same educational podcast at the same time while they walk. So if a teacher is teaching a unit on the Revolutionary War, um, instead of you know having the kids sit down and listen to a lesson about the Intolerable Acts, um, the kids can all get up, go for a walk, get some fresh air, and learn about the Intolerable Acts. Um, and so you know, it doesn't replace the curriculum, but it certainly is a really strong supplement to the curriculum. 
And you know that you know exercise is good for kids for so many reasons, um, not the least of which is that it oxygenates and activates their brains. And so um, this is one of my favorite slides. I think it's just so, um, makes it so very obvious the benefits of getting some exercise and even just walking. So uh, after 20 minutes, the kids, their brains are you know soggy. After 20 minutes of walking and physical activity, the brain lights up. And I used to say to my students all the time, um, if the bum is numb, the brain is the same. And so if you're sitting around all day like we are, <laughs> right now I should be up walking while I'm giving this webinar. Um, but if, you know, the kids, if they sit, that's sort of the, the impact on their learning as well. So the walking classroom is truly active learning. We were fortunate enough to work with uh, University of North Carolina Chapel Hill a couple years ago, and uh, they did a program evaluation, a research study of the walk-in classroom, and it really just validated what we had heard from teachers for years, um, is that you know not only do the kids love the walk-in classroom, they sort of think that they're getting, getting out of doing work, um, but it really, the benefits for them just extend way beyond that 20 minutes while they're walking. So um, after they walk, their, their cognitive function was higher, um, but then also their retention a month later um, was much stronger. So the kids who had walked and listened to a podcast a month later and took another quiz about what the podcast was, was about, um, their retention was much stronger than the kids who had not been walking. Um, and they just, like I said, they just think it's fun. It's sort of the stealth learning. Um, and not only did they learn more, but they were happier. So the kids would come back to class. Um, they were more engaged. They were more enthusiastic in a good way. Um, you know, you're sort of, you know, really sort of hyper kids. They sort of calm down a little bit. They're able to get their squirrels out. And then the lethargic kids, they really do wake up and they're able to sort of participate more with that oxygenated brain. Um, so that's, that's where we are. We walk, listen, and learn. We've been around for 10 years. Like I said, we're a nonprofit. We're based in Chapel Hill. Um, we've won a bunch of awards. It's, it's good stuff. Oh, don't forget your masks. I was super proud of my PowerPoint skills with that uh, pathetic mask um, fly-in. Okay, so what do the kids listen to while they walk? A lot. So I apologize for the size of this, but this will be a link that I will send to you. Um, there are over, there's an entire school year's worth of podcasts that come with the walk-in classroom program. Um, so there are podcasts about language arts topics. There's podcasts with social studies topics. There's podcasts with science topics. Um, and the beginning of each podcast begins with a quick health literacy message. Um, and then it's sort of the meat of the podcast, the heavy content. And then there's also a character value that's sort of woven throughout. Um, so for example, one of the science podcasts is physical versus political maps. Um, so the basic formula of each podcast is that it's two students and their teacher who are out for a walk. And so the students who are walking, it's as if they're sort of eavesdropping on somebody else having a conversation. So it's not a direct lecture. It's not, you know, all the difference between physical and political maps is, you know, the boundaries. Da, da, da. So it's not like that at all. It's actual kid voices. It's actually former students of mine who I recorded the podcast with. Um, and they're all having this conversation. So the, the podcast might begin with one of the kids um, sort of like tripping on the other child. And um, the one kid might say like, hey, come on, back up. You're, you know, you're not six feet away, as the case may be. Um, but, you know, hey, you're too close. And then um, the other child might say something like, oh, well, I just sort of wanted to be close to you because I wanted to tell you something. And then the teacher might jump in. The teacher's always me. Um, the teacher would jump in and say, you know, hey, Hey guys, there is, you know, this thing called personal space and sort of give a little lesson about how different people and certainly different cultures have a different idea of what personal space involves. Um, and then, oh, interestingly, speaking of space, and then it sort of pivots into a, a conversation about political and physical maps. Um, so then the, 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 you know, the majority of the podcast is about physical and political maps. And, you know, the kids have this conversation. They might be reviewing something that they talked about in class, asking questions, clarifying with the teacher. Um, and then at the end of every podcast, there are 
just sort of review questions that are built in so that as the kids are finished walking, um, they take their headphones out and they can continue the walk and with their partner or, you know, if you're walking, if you're doing homeschool with a parent or a grandparent, um, you know, it sort of provides the opportunity for discussion questions. And so, um, you know, whatever the, the discussion question might be, and that's all in the teacher's guide, I'll tell more about that. Um, but that's sort of the general overview of how each of the podcasts are structured. So with an entire school year, um, you know, these kids, if you walk every day, great. Um, if you walk two or three times a week, that's great too. And each time students listen to a podcast, not only are they building their background knowledge about these, you know, core curriculum content areas, um, but they're also building up their health literacy. So the different health literacy messages, you know, personal space, but there's also um, reminders about like calories, like what's a healthy calorie versus an empty calorie or sleep or sports drinks or, or you know, lots of different things that the kids, as they learn more, it provides them a better toolbox to make healthier choices going forward. Um, and then with the, you know, health, or excuse me, with the, um, the character value, um, you know, there's different things like honesty, integrity, um, responsibility, you know, different things like that, which again, not heavy handed, um, but, you know, just definitely reviewed. So I'll give you an example. So this is, each podcast is supported by um, a lesson plan. And the lesson plans each have a synopsis at the top and it sort of gives an overview of what it's about. Um, you can see for this podcast, it's about 15 minutes long. The character value is approaching obstacles. And then the health message talks about toxins. So each lesson plan always reviews some of the vocabulary that students might not be so familiar with um, in the beginning, like hydrothermal. It's probably a good idea to review what that means. It's definitely reviewed within the podcast, but, you know, give the, ki give the kids a chance to sort of um, get a heads up on that first. Um, and then there's pre-questions that you can sort of build background knowledge and sort of connect that bridge. And then the questions after the students listen to the podcast, you know, what were some of the big ideas? Um, and then, you know, for this question number two, hot springs and geysers occur in specific locations. What are, what conditions are required? So, definitely reviewing the content that the kids learned. Um, and then it shifts into the discussion questions and the discussion questions with the, with the um, social emotional learning component definitely has a much more personal feel. So um, the question, for example, says, you know, hot springs occur gradually and peacefully. Geysers appear dramatically and forcefully. Although they're very different, both are beautiful. What's the benefit of approaching things with patience and taking your time? And on the flip side, What's the benefit of approaching things boldly and confidently? And so it provides the student an opportunity to, you know, if they're comfortable, they can share about their experience. Um, if they're not so comfortable, they can talk about the benefits in the context of hot springs and geysers. And it's not such a personal thing, but it really does sort of open up a door um, to connect content to social emotional learning. Each podcast is also supported by a lesson plan. And so the lesson plans are always 10 questions and they go from basic recall to then higher level thinking skills. So by the time you get down to questions seven and eight, um, it's talking about sequencing or inference or main idea. And then questions nine and 10 are always health related. So um, the health message for this podcast was about toxins. So the health literacy questions nine and 10 are going to review toxins. So it's a great way, like question number four is always about, you know, vocabulary. Um, question number five is always going to be about character traits. And so it's just a great way if you're keeping track over the course of a school year or whatever, if you wanted to focus on one sort of thing, you'd be able to sort of, you know, isolate different questions and sort of see how the child is progressing along that. Okay. I'm a little hot here. Sorry. <laughs> I'm getting so excited about the program. Um, so once you are an adopter, um, and we'll talk about how that happens in a little bit, but once you are an adopter, we have an extensive um, library of adopter resources. And so I'm going to click on that. And once you become um, an adopter, you can, this is our homepage, you would click on teacher resources. And then 
Are you a walk-in classroom adopter? Well, yes, I am. Um, so then you can access the adopter resources. And the adopter resources, our staff, half of us are former teachers, and so they love gathering all these things for you know these kids and teachers to learn. Um, and so we have tons and tons and tons of supplemental adopter resources. Um, and a good place to start is probably the teacher toolbox. And in the teacher toolbox, um, we have several downloadables. And so you have, you know, you can keep track of your walking, um, like here for your monthly walking log. And so on Monday, whatever the date was, what podcast did you listen to? How far did you walk? So maybe you might want to set a goal. So from your house, you want to walk to Disney World not in times of COVID, but let's say that you did. Um, or, you know, you want to walk to somewhere where you're not going to get sick, like the beaches. Anyway, regardless of where you wanted to walk, um, you can turn it into a math activity. And so you can say, you know, um, how far do we need to get there? And if, if the child and the parent are walking, you can total that up, the mileage that way. You can think about what percentage of the way are we there. You can keep track of your time, of, of your distance. So there's lots of other math, um, not just keeping track of it, but pulling a lot of math into it as well. Um, there's also, we have, you know, how to start a listening journal. So if you're going to be listening, um, whether you're doing a hybrid model or you're, you know, walking uh, just at home, um, you can start a listening journal and all you need is a regular spiral notebook. And that's a great way to sort of have the kids keep track of what day they listen to whatever podcast, have them write a brief summary of what it was, maybe keep track of a couple questions that they might still have about the podcast, things that they wanna learn more about, maybe what it reminded them of, lots and lots of opportunity um, for you know, writing opportunities with that. And then I had mentioned thick questions earlier. So we also have um, review on that of how to teach kids to ask thick questions. So it's a great, you know, skill for the classroom, but it's a great skill for life, right? So instead of when the kids are finished listening to a podcast, instead of looking at their mom or their friend, instead of saying, oh, did you like it? Um, you know, teaching them how to ask thoughtful questions that require more than a one word answer. So, um, you know, the podcast about Albert Einstein, well, what would you have done differently if X, Y, Z, or why do you think, um, you know, Susan Anthony did this? Um, you know, so just developing that skill um, so that they can, whoever they're walking with, they can sort of, you know, expand on those ideas. Um, so we have that as an option. And then, let's see, here we go. Um, nope, let's get back to there. We also have lots of adopter resources. Um, sorry about that. Let me just get back to where I was going. Um, you can search for resources that supplement the specific podcasts. So, um, for example, the, pot, the lesson plan that I just showed you um, was about hot springs and geysers. So you can search for supplemental materials about that podcast in particular. So you just search geyser. And then that podcast pops up. And if you click on it, there's all of these supplemental resources um, that help you know, that have different sort of opportunities to engage different learning styles about hot springs and geysers. So all of our podcasts, um, the quizzes have been, con been converted to Google Docs as well. So you can have, you know, if you have a group of kids, they can, su they can submit um, their answers through the Google quiz. We also have a slide deck that helps teachers introduce um, the podcast. Lots of related videos. And then also, you know, different hands-on activities, different projects that, that have been, you know, pulled from the internet. Um, and all of these resources have been um, reviewed and approved by our teaching staff. So um, it's a lot of fun. So for example, the virtual field trip for Yellowstone National Park, you can show your students about, you know, these hot springs and geysers. Um, and all of these resources are pulled together for you. Um, Go back up here for a second. 
You can also um, if you wanted to focus on a certain subject area, so let's say, um, you know, social studies, if you wanted to focus on, you know, 20th century America or um, biographies, Civil War and construction. So I'm going to search for Civil War podcasts. And then these are the various podcasts that come with the walk-in classroom and all of the supplemental resources that are there to help support the instruction of that. Um, so, you know, with the, well, I'll go through, I'll go through the player versus the app in just one second. So anyways, just so you know that each podcast has a whole cache of uh, support behind it. Okay. Um, oh, there you go. Don't forget those masks. If the program was going to be used in traditional school or out of school time, um, the, the walk it, the audio devices, they come preloaded with 167 podcasts. Um, and it uses a standard uh, headphone jack. So it's super easy. The materials are really easy to share. Um, if you use like a Clorox wipe to wipe it down, they're really durable. You don't want to spray it, um, but it's certainly easy enough to, you know, share among students as long as you clean it, you know, thoroughly. You can also even just wrap the players um, like in uh, plastic wrap and then, you know, take that off each time. Um, so just some ideas for this hybrid remote learning if you're in a traditional school setting. Uh, the listening journals, like I said, the date listen, the summary, more questions about what you'd like to learn, and then, you know, just practicing thick questions um, of the podcast to ask other students. Uh, you can also have listening groups. And so on here, as an example, I said, divide the class into three groups. You could divide the class into 10 groups. You can divide however it worked out for you. Um, but you could have different kids listen to the same podcast. And so maybe one child, one group of kids listen to um, a biography about um, Clara Barton, and then another group of kids listen to a biography about Sojourner Truth. Um, and then those two students maybe could get to get those groups could sort of make lists of, you know, personality traits. And then the two groups could share and sort of compare, you know, and, and make connections that way. Um, but what that also allows students to do is, you know, while the students are walking, if you could have a parent volunteer come and sort of lead a walking group, that enables the teacher to then take another group, a smaller group, um, and do remedial learning. You certainly want to let those kids have the opportunity to walk and listen and learn as well. Um, but with the walking classroom, you know, it's, 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 really strong academic content. You don't have to worry about what the kids, you know, you don't have to plan for what they're learning. And it does give those teachers an opportunity to sort of work with kids who might be struggling a little bit. Um, Fun Friday is always an option where you let the kids choose whatever they want to listen to, um, and then they can share it with the classmates. Um, another idea is um, Google Maps. And so if you were to click on where you lived or where your school is. Um, this is actually my neighborhood. I grew up on the south side of Chicago. So this is my old neighborhood and Paul Revere was my primary school. Um, so you could right click and then what that does is, oh, I need to lift this up a little bit. You can measure your distance. So you put your starting point and then you sort of just click around what your walking trail, oh, I definitely got to go. We don't want to go to Tommy's place, but we want to go to that takeout place. That looks good. Um, but you click around and you can do your route. Oh, Pierre's Bakery, that looks good. Definitely have to go there. Um, and it clicks, it marks the distance that you've traveled. So that's a fun thing that you can have the kids do. But then it also provides the opportunity for more math. Right, so you could say, how many feet was this? It converted to how many kilometers, how many miles? Um, how could you ex expand on that? You could also have the kids do a map from where they live or from where the school is and sort of create um, like a scavenger hunt, right? And that would work not only digital skills, but it would also work with like <laughs> political maps. And, um, you know, you, kids could practice their cardinal directions. So 
go, you know, 300 feet north and then turn west and then, you know, turn south. Um, and then we end up at, you know, how do we get to Pierre's Bakery sort of thing. So um, that's just another way that the kids can have a lot of fun um, seeing their neighborhoods, seeing their other friends' neighborhoods. Maybe they could plot the distance from their place to their friend's place. So just, just some ideas of, of how to incorporate, um, you know, the walking classroom in different, different scenarios. Oh, don't forget the masks. Okay, um, a super fun thing is also to have the kids create their own podcast. They love to do this. Um, and honestly, there's a million different free resources on the internet to have the kids do that. Um, so we don't provide like guidance on how to do that because different people have access to different resources. Um, but even just the voice memo on a phone could be submitted as, and then, you know, just send that off to the teacher um, as, as a podcast. But if a child is interested in elephants or if a child is interested in the electoral college, great, you can provide them, you know, some sort of structure about how to create their, um, what needs to be included in their report. Um, or if they wanted to record a short story that they wrote, what, whatever it might be. Um, and then you can upload that, um, you know, to the teacher's website or whatever, and then the kids could listen to everybody else's podcast, um, you know, it, it, on their own time. And for those students who are really so far beyond us technologically, um, and they can add literally the bells and whistles, and that's great. Um, but then those students can also act as mentors and as sort of IT consultants for the other kids who might struggle a little bit with um, some, you know, some podcast ideas. Um, and if you have some good ones, send them along to us. We would love to hear them. That would be so great. Um, anyway, so that's, that's always a fun idea. Okay, nitty gritty. Tell us about this program. Okay, so the the original program of the walk-in classroom was this self-contained audio player that was preloaded with a school year's worth of podcasts, and that's the one on the left. Um, you might be familiar with those. It's a play-away device. You can get them at like public libraries. Sometimes like full audio books come preloaded on there. So it's the same device, except it's just loaded with our custom content. Um, there's no Wi-Fi, no data needed. It comes preloaded, ready to go out of the box. You are good. You got a AAA battery, which is, you know, comes with the shipment, um, some earbuds that come with the shipment, and it's done. So if you live in a rural area or if there's students, you know, who might not ha have access to data or Wi-Fi, this is a great option. Um, those are $125 per device, yours to keep, and then we provide free training and, like I said, free access to all of those supplemental resources. Um, as well as free professional development on demand whenever you need it, just let us know. We're happy to help out. We're recently able to offer an app, which we're really excited about, um, and it's available on um, iOS or Android, and that is $3.99 per device per month starting September 1st, but for now you could get it for free. Um, so if you just search the walking classroom, I guess not even the, but if you just search walking classroom podcasts, um, you'll have access to our entire program. Um, and so just, you know, it will, there will be a charge starting next month, but if you want to get um, a feel for the program, I highly encourage you to go ahead and download that. Okay. Um, we also, like I said, we have a teacher's guide with um, lesson plans that support each podcast. It's $150 for a hard copy um, or $100 for the electronic version. But you guys will get it for free. Um, so for our uh, attendees, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and as part of the, um, the follow-up email, there will be a link that you can download um, the PDF version of the teacher's guide. So you'll be able to get that um, for free. We always like free. Um, if you did, if the preloaded audio device works better for you, um, you can go ahead and go to thewalkingclassroom.org and in the upper right hand corner, click buy and that'll take you to our store and then um, ship free and you can get uh, in the code and that will give you free shipping. Okay. Oh, I am so sweaty right now. It's North Carolina and it's a 5,000 degrees and a thousand percent humidity. 
plus I just get excited about the program. Um, but if you have any questions, please go ahead and um, like I said, we're a small group. If you want to unmute yourself and you can ask the question or if you wanted to type it into the chat, um, we, can, we can do that too. Let's wait a couple minutes. I don't have any Jeopardy music or anything and you certainly don't want to hear me sing, so I'll just... <laughs> Um, okay. All right. Hopefully I answered all the questions. Um, just know that the walk-in classroom, you know, that the kids, higher levels of cognitive performance, short-term and long-term learning, improves their mood, increased classroom engagement, and greater enjoyment of walking. And even with like the classroom engagement, um, so for a lot of people, they're going to be homeschooling. And so what you can do is, um, you know, you can have little groups. And so maybe one week, one parent sort of, you know, works with five kids or however many, um, or one family is sort of like the walking classroom family. And then, you know, they're the ones who sort of lead the other neighborhood kids around. You can have a walking club. Um, you know, when you are in um, homeschool, you're not bound to eight to three. You certainly have more flexibility. And so if part of your social studies class is an after dinner walk, um, then that's great. And, and you know, and it's, it's geared towards students in grades three through eight, but we do have students in high school that use it. But we also have like, you know, grandparents that use it with their kids and they enjoy it just as much. Um, so thank you, Nilsa. I hope that you do enjoy it. Um, and uh, you know, again, if you ever have any questions, oops, hold on, let me get there. There we go. Uh, we are here for you. That's my email, laura at thewalkingclassroom.org. Um, and that's our office phone number. And then the website is there. Please poke around, take advantage of those free um, podcasts that are available through the end of this month. And as I like to say, keep clam and walk on. That's one of my favorite illustrations ever. Um, and, you know, we'll, we're, we're all in this together. I'm so grateful for all the work that you do and for, you know, <laughs> I wish you a lot of strength and a lot of grace and patience as you're home with your children. I'm grateful that mine are older. I, I, um, it's, it's, it's a struggle and, and this is, these are crazy times and we hope that we can help get, help get you through this, um, a little bit more enjoyably and, well, whatever you need, let us know. <laughs>